Let's break it. Let's start this video out with what appears to be a cardboard barrel with some wires. Well, for the purpose of this video, that's not what you're looking at. You're looking at the air around you and all of those colored wires represent radio frequencies. RF coming from all the various stations slamming against our little radio's antenna. Poor little radio antenna. That little radio antenna has got to be able to sort through all this stuff and give us the station we want. Now looking down in there I can see, let me see, I can see KAAY at a Little Rock. That's the green one. That's 1090. Oh, there's the one we want. Look at we, that yellow one. That yellow frequency down there is 650 AM WSM at a Nashville. That's the one we want right down there. But you know, the problem is, how does the little radio sort through all this crap and give us the station we want? WSM, right there. Let's take a look at this carrier business, this uh, frequency generated by the radio station, the RF carrier. In our case, 650 kilocycles, 650 AM out of Nashville. Now, it's being transmitted by the antenna. Here's a little, here's a little radio shack. The guy's in there talking and it's being transmitted out into the air. And it's all the same, uh, same frequency. I know that's a little bumpy right there, but they should be perfectly even top and bottom. Anyway, there it is. It just goes out into the air. And then here, the singer, or the guy who plays music, whatever, or the guy doing the talking, he begins to talk into the microphone, and his voice, or audio, is being laid on top of that RF. And it shapes that RF. It, every time his voice goes up and down and the frequencies change, you know, it, they're really close together sometimes. Every time he, he talks, it, it shapes that radio frequency. That's 650 kilocycles. And that's called modulation. The RF carrier, this is the carrier. It's carrying the audio, just like a horse carries a rider. When you put the voice on it, you're modulating the carrier at the audio frequency of this guy's voice, okay? Now, the human does not have a standard frequency. They have what's called random frequency. The human voice is random frequency. So whatever frequency that guy is talking is how that carrier is going to be modulated. <clears throat> now by the time it reaches your radio, it's pretty tiny. Unless you live really close to the radio station. You know, if you live 25, 30 miles away, it's going to be really, really tiny. But it's still going to be this, okay? It's going to be the carrier modulated by the audio, but it's going to be super small. And that's what's actually hitting the antenna. It does it through the use of this antenna coil right here on a ferrite rod and a variable capacitor down in here. Now this stuff, this kind of stuff is covered all over the internet. Rick McWhorter covers all kinds of stuff about this, you know, RF flow from the uh, station to the radio and then from you know once it hits the antenna what happens to it it goes down in it does this that and whatever and they're all over another one of our uh, good subscribers is uh, john richter he also put up a you know a very nice uh, a video about uh you know signal flow through the radio so what we're going to do is i'm just going to do you know kind of a quick show here this is the antenna right here and that's the variable capacitor that I showed you here. We're going to do a quick show and tell you what happens and, and then the signal comes down here flows into this tube. Now we're going to go ahead and remove like I said 650 WSM our favorite nighttime radio station at least where I am. It's my favorite and it's done through the use of a you know I've always considered this to be a an oscillating circuit but apparently it's not. It's more of a resonator okay it's a resonator and it, it's controlled by this variable capacitor this thing just kind of sits here this is sits here and, and it's controlled by this I'm not going to go into the absolute details of how all this works it, it's not needed just know that when this tank circuit 
re reaches resonance at any given point along the uh, broadcast band frequencies, which are about 510, I'm not 540 up into up until about 1610 is what it really is. 540 kilocycles up to about 1610 kilocycles. That's what this uh, tuner uh, in the radio is capable of. Yeah, that's the range of the tuner from the low to the high. And it can go up and down that range and it, it works in conjunction with this antenna coil to finally reach resonance at any given point along the dial. Yeah, it, it reaches resonance all the time, the entire time you're tuning it. It's just that it reaches resonance on different frequencies. Well, we're looking for the 650. And when we find it, what's going to happen is it's going to pass that 650 kilocycles on through to grid number 3 of the 12BE6, which is a converter. It's also called a, a mixer. And it's also called something I like. I like uh, the name that, that I also found for it. It's called a frequency changer. I like that. Not only is it a frequency changer, it's also an amplifier. It has to take this tiny little signal that's coming in. It's got to make it bigger. The radio really can't use a tiny signal. It's got to be boosted up. Right here at the front of the radio. It has to go higher so it can be used by the rest of the radio. And that's another function of this tube. This tube will mix frequencies or fre change the frequency and increase uh, the amplitude. Well, there it is. The tank circuit has done its job. It is at resonance for 650 kilocycles. The RF carrier frequency, carrier frequency of 650 AM. And here it is. The old radio, it's letting 650 AM out of the barrel all by itself, you see, and rejecting all the rest. World famous because of you. 650 AM, WSM. And there it is. Let's look at the plates on our, uh, the two different sets of plates on our tuner. One set, which is this set right here connected to the or in uh, involved in the uh, in, with the antenna the tunable range of that set of plates is 540 kilocycles up to 1610 kilocycles that's generally what it is for most a some of them maybe a little lower maybe only like 1600 kc but we're going to go with 1610 540 to about 1610 now kilocycles means thousand cycles so this is 540,000 cycles. This is uh, 1,610,000 1 cycles. Okay. Now another item. That's the two. Anyway, that's the tunable range of the one set of uh, uh, variable capacitor plates. Now we have that other set next to it. Now that set of plates is down here. Let me see. It's right there. You see that little dotted line that shows that they're connected together. They're on the same shaft. Now the tune of now this is the oscillator down the local oscillator okay the local oscillator in the radio and this set of plates which is the second set of plates the tunable range is from 995 kilocycles in this radio up to 2065 kilocycles now the difference between this number and this number and this number and this number on the tunable ranges of those sets of plates is 455 kilocycles. 455 kilocycles is the intermediate frequency of this particular radio. Now, if you had a radio that was, uh, I don't know, I've seen some radios, I've had them, I think they were 265 or something like that. If I recall, I can't remember, 265 kilocycles was the IF. So, of course, if that was the case, then this bottom number right here, this second set of variable capacitor plates, they, these numbers would be different. It would be, instead of 455 being the difference, it would only be 265. It, it all depends on what, the, uh, on what your intermediate frequency is. And it's always printed somewhere on the schematic. In this case, they printed it right here above each of the IF cans, okay? 455 KC. Normally, any really in the 1930s, it's like right in the middle of the schematic somewhere in big black letters. They have it written here. Anyway, what we're going to do is uh, we we're going you know we tuned in the WSM 
out of Nashville, which is 650 kilocycles. WSM 650 AM, okay? Now we add 455 kilocycles to that, which is the intermediate frequency, and we get 1105. So 1105 kilocycles is what's being mixed into this tube, okay? 1105 uh, coming out of this local oscillator. We have 60 or 650 coming in on the antenna up here, and they're both being mixed in this frequency changer converter mixer. That's all I'm going to say on that thing, okay? And I'll tell you why. Uh, this video series, I'm I'm not trying to try to pretend that I'm some kind of electronics teacher because I'm not. This set of series of, uh, of videos are cause and effect. We're going to break it. We're going to short it. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then we're going to see what the effect is. We're going to cause a problem, and then we're going to find out what the effect is. I don't want to go any deeper than that because I, I just can't go any deeper than that. Now, Brendan will verify that. <laughs> just know that after all the frequencies are mixed, the frequency from the oscillator, the frequency coming in on the tuner after this thing resonates at the proper frequency to let it through. Once they mix, you get 450 kilocycles out. And the reason you get 450 kilocycles out is because it is the intermediate frequency of this radio. And this set of this first set of intermediate frequency transformers has got to see 455 kilocycles or it will stop it in its tracks. It'll stop it dead. It, it, it can be pretty, you know, it can be pretty close. I mean, I've had radios run that sometimes you can tune them off, just tune them a little bit off the, the intermediate frequency and they play better because of age. You know, these things have warped and changed and all kinds of weird things have happened. So anyway, that's all we're going to cover right there in this segment. So what we're going to do is try to break, uh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do something with these two resistors uh, or this capacitor and see if we can't cause some noise to happen in this radio. I'm only going to do one or two because there's another section I, you guys asked a question and toward the end of this video I'm going to answer it so it took up a lot of time. So let me see what I can do here. The first thing we're going to break is R3 right here. Now R3 is connected to the control grid, pin 1. And it's, you know, it's grid number 1 also. And normally you have a negative voltage there if your oscillator is functioning. If your oscillator is not functioning and you have a positive voltage there, then, you know, things are not good. Now later on, we're going to go ahead and probably disconnect here and see what happens. And maybe disconnect from this resistor here, which will, you know, shut down the oscillator as far as the tube's concerned, because nothing will be coming up. But right now, let's just go ahead and remove one side or the other from R3 and uh, R3's function is to keep the grid at zero. Uh, uh, it's a pull down resistor. It keeps the control grid at zero when there's no signal. All right. All right. I now have it disconnected. I have disconnected R3 from the tube end, not the ground. I just took it out of the circuit right there. So there's nothing there connected to the grid. And I you now right now I have it alligatored in, a gator wire. I have it gator wired in with this these two right here. One comes over and I have it gator wired to the resistor, as you can see right there. There's the there's the tube side of the resistor. And the other, I just gator wired it back here where the pin was or where the uh, you know the lead of the resistor went through the board and was soldered in. So let's turn up the volume. All right. Now let's go ahead and disconnect the lead from here and see what happens from the from the tubes. Uh, let me see. This would be the uh, yeah the tube side. Here we go. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Check that out. Turn the volume down. Well, it reacts to the volume. All right. Now let's see if we can hook it back up without making a mistake here. Turn up the volume. Actually, as you can see, just using gator wires is already causing a problem. 
you know I don't even I don't even have to uh, let me back up here a little bit just using gator wires to hook it in is causing a problem so let's crank it back up see if we can tune the station in hear that whistling and stuff Probably not getting a good contact right there. I need to wiggle it around. Well, all kinds of problems. You see what happens when that grid resistor is messed up? Alright, let's disconnect it one more time. Alright, when you hear a sound like that, start looking at your grid resistor, folks. Well, we know what happens now when we uh, go ahead and remove this uh, 22K resistor from the circuit. You get, it, get that ticking noise, you know. Now, what happens when we short across it? Let's just short from here to ground, which would be the grid. What do you think will happen? Hmm. You know what I think will happen? I think the, the signal coming up from the oscillator will come here, go straight to ground. And the radio is going to go dead. Let's find out. This is kind of cool. Let's see what happens. Now I've got this uh, gator wire connected to my multimeter lead here. Let me back up a little bit. I've got it connected to this multimeter lead because it's kind of a tight squeeze down in here. I do have one side of that resistor still hooked up with the gator wire. Let's go ahead and touch the uh, lead here. The, uh, we're going to short, short across it. Here we go. Radio went dead. Radio is dead. So that could mean many things. That could mean your uh, resistor, your pull down resistor is shorted, as I just did. Let me get over here again. It could mean this uh, pull down resistor is shorted. It could mean that uh, uh, the oscillator is no longer working. It could mean that, uh, come on, camera, do a little focusing here. There we go. It could mean that this capacitor is open. It could mean that this resistor is open. It could mean that the tube is bad. Totally dead. When you, you know, as soon as it's dead, you need to get over here and start checking on this control grid. If you have a dead radio, it could be your oscillators uh, not functioning. But if you have a negative voltage, in this case, it's supposed to be negative 0.3. If you have a negative 0.3 voltage right there, thereabouts, that means the oscillator is pretty well working. And there's another way to test that also by using a second radio. And uh, Matter of fact, I think Rick McWhorter has a couple of videos out, or at least one where he shows, where he takes another radio, sets it next to a second radio, and tunes back and forth to determine whether or not the oscillator is working. We might be able to get that done. I don't know. Anyway, that's all I'm going to do on the cause and effect for this tube. We know how the signal comes in. We know that the frequencies, uh, the range, the frequency range of this uh, set of plates is different from this set of plates by 455 kilocycles. It all gets mixed together up here and 455 kilocycles come out, comes out and, and goes into the primary of this intermediate transformer. It needs 455 kilocycles. It says so right there. It won't pass it if it's not. We now know that this pull down resistor is designed to keep this control grid at zero volts when there's no signal coming through. We shorted it. We opened it and we saw what happened, okay? All right, next time we'll cover a couple of more things. Right now I want to move on to the last segment. Last but not least, we had a couple of comments uh, from our good subscribers. They said, you know, John, what you should have done, when you put this resistor in series with this 1500 uh, ohm resistor, you put that 1000 ohm resistor in, and it cut down the voltage, you should have measured that voltage right there. So we could see how, you know, the lower voltage affected the, the operation of the radio. You know, we, we could find out exactly what the voltage was. Well, you know, we can do that. And we're going to do that. And I'll tell you how. We started this video out with a barrel full of wires. And we're going to finish it with a desk full of wires. <laughs> All right, here's the deal. I have connected a meter, which is this fluke right here, that was given to me, by the way, by our, our good man up there in Detroit, my mentor, Brendan. He sent me that. That's his old fluke meter, and he says it's as accurate as the day he bought it years ago. 
So he bought a new one and he sent that one to me. And I'm glad he did because I now have use for it. It's kind of hard to see the display sometimes. So I primarily rely on this one and this one just to give you an idea. But of the three here, that is definitely the most accurate. And I've got it, I think, wherever we can, we can see what's going on. I've got the fluke across the line of the voltage coming in. Okay, I've got this one here, the yellow one, is across... Is, is, is right here uh, where the voltage is coming out providing the 90 volts all right right there let me zoom in here a little bit here you can see things a little better I've got the yellow one hooked right here so you'll see the voltage coming out and just you know just with the 1500 ohm resistor in there and I've got this big old red jobby here I've got it connected to the plate of the 12 be6 right here which is a 90 volt supply okay that's where that one's connected. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and control the very I've got everything hooked in, set up, and what we're going to do is turn on the variac. And we're going to tune in a station, turn on the very I've turned on the variac, tune in, get the radio playing, tune in a station, and then just start cranking the voltage down. Let's see how low we can go and still keep this radio playing. All right, I believe we're ready to go here. I now have 124.4 volts coming in on the line. Right there. I have 87.1 volts coming out right here from that 1500 ohm resistor. And I have 86.5 volts going to the plate of the 12BE6. Now this is 87.2 versus 86.4. Now there's going to be that little bit of discrepancy because if you go up here and look at the 12BE6 plate voltage right here, it gets run through the resistance of this uh, coil, of this IF coil. It gets its plate voltage through there. So there's going to be a slight drop. And of course we're dealing with the inaccuracies of uncalibrated meters, okay? That one is the only one that is right on, as I told you. So let's go. Let's crank down the voltage. First, we'll bring up the station, then start cranking down the voltage, and we'll see just how low we can go. The one I'm primarily interested in is this one right here. This is the one you all wanted to know about, of the voltage coming out of that resistor right there. So we're gonna, what we're doing, we're simulating adding resistance, sort of, to right there, okay? So here we go. Let's crank up the, the volume. Let's see how well we can go. Seventy-five volts coming out of there, and about seventy-five volts. Actually, seventy-six volts. Seventy-five volts going to the plate, which means it'll be about the same amount of voltage to this uh, twelve BA six. Also, right here, let me get this light lamp out of my way. It'll be about ninety volts on that twelve BA six there, right there. Also, and the screen grid voltage still playing at seventy-five. Now that's quite a bit of tolerance, folks. Let's see how low we can continue to go. Here we go. Seventy volts. Seventy volts on the plate. Now I've got the volume up all the way. It's starting to fade a little bit. This is amazing, isn't it? Now you know just. The, the, the tolerances of the resistor, sometimes we get all hung up on, oh, it's, it's 200, 300 ohms over. Heck, don't worry about it, you know? When you're trying to fix your radio, just get her going. Then we can worry about changing resistors later. Let's take it down a little farther. 68. On the plate. Starting to fade out about now, okay? So around 70 volts, depending on the radio. Of course, some radios can even go lower. Get it about 70 volts, you can still get a good radio. Now, I'm dealing with a fairly weak station. There's just not much available around here during the day. Starting to get a little garbly, see? Let's bring it back up. Let's see if we can tune it in a little better. 
There you go, anywhere from 75, maybe on up, you get really good, uh, well, not really good, but you do get reception and the radio continues to work. I hope that answers everyone's questions, okay? Our input, by the way, is at 110 volts. Well, that should do it. Until next time, this is John.